It's last Parsha of the year. I have two options for you. Wait, and I can choose? Parashat Nitzavim just before Rosh Hashanah. As every year, we read Parashat Nitzavim just before Rosh Hashanah because even though it's a small parasha, it's still filled with very, very important topics that are relevant for the new year that the Bezat Hashem is upon us. And last year, we discussed Parashat HaTshuva. Right after Parashat HaTshuva, we find very familiar psukim. Psukim that sound familiar because we heard very similar psukim in the past. Re'en natati lefanecha hayom. Moshe Rabbeinu tells Am Yisrael, he's giving before us two options and we have to choose et ha'chaim ve'et ha'tov, life and good, et ha'ma death and bad. And then Moshe Rabbeinu continues and explains to Am Yisrael that they should choose the good. And then he says again, he gives in front of us bracha veklala, the blessing and the curse, ubacharta b'chaim. And Am Yisrael should choose life. And there's two questions that you have to ask over here about the choice Moshe is giving us. Because first of all, what kind of a choice is it if Moshe tells us to choose one? Is there really a choice if he says bracharta b'chaim? If Moshe Rabbeinu says choose life, so then okay, there is no choice. So what exactly is he putting in front of Am Yisrael? But more than that, let's Let's assume you can choose. Who exactly is going to choose death? Who's going to choose the bad things? Of course, everybody's going to choose life. Of course, everybody's going to choose the good. So what exactly is Moshe Rabbeinu saying over here? What is the choice over here in front of Am Yisrael? What are Am Yisrael supposed to do when it says, What are they supposed to choose? Obviously, everybody wants to choose life. So what is Moshe Rabbeinu saying over here? What are these talking about? And how important is it being now just before Rosh Hashanah for the new year that's coming in Mitzvah Shem? It's very interesting in that comparison you made to Parshat Re'eh, where we have the same words. See, I put before you these two options, and here we also have that C, and I have before you these two options. But if we look carefully at the words, we'll see a difference which I think can help us understand what's going on here. Because over there in Parshat Re'eh, it was talking about something that I'm presenting before you in the present, maybe in the future. See, I'm putting before you these two options. Re'eh I'm putting before you. Here it says Re'eh Natati, meaning in the past. I put before you. So in other words, Moshe Rabbeinu is not presenting something new here. He's not presenting another choice, but rather going back to what he said before and saying something about that. Remember, I presented something before you. Remember, I presented those two options. Now I'm going to tell you something about that. And I think if we look at the psukim here that way, we can understand this totally different. Yes, there is no choice. I can't say you have either life or death. Now choose what you want. Of course, that's not a choice. Maybe Moshe Rabbeinu is saying something else. He's saying, you know, I presented something. I said there are two ways you can listen to God and you cannot listen to God. And I said that one way will bring blessing and one way will bring a punishment. But now I want to tell you something more than that. It's not just that one thing is the right thing to do and you're going to get blessing. And if you do the other thing, then you're going to get punished. It's a lot more than that. And this at the end is Moshe's last messages. He says choosing good is not because you're going to get a prize. And it's not because you're getting a punishment if you don't do good. It's because this is who you are. This is your life. This is Moshe Rabbeinu explaining those two choices and saying, listen to me. It's not two choices. This is life. This is who you are. As Moshe Rabbeinu continues to say, Hu chayechem. This is your life. It's not that you need to choose this so you avoid a punishment. Because this is what you are. This is who you are. This is what makes you what you are. Running away from this is like running away from life. Yeah, in life, the choices aren't necessarily that clear. We won't see one and it'll say life and the other one will have a big sign saying death. It's not like that. Moshe Rabbeinu is saying, yes, you will have two options. And as the Midrash says, one may have thorns at the beginning and seem like not a good way to go. And the other one may look good, but actually have thorns at the end. And therefore, Moshe Rabbeinu is helping us choose and say, this one that may not look good at the beginning, this is life. And that one isn't life. And that's what Moshe Rabbeinu is ending off here and saying. He said, yes, in last parasha, I told you all about the punishments that you may get. I told you all about this. But I don't want you to end off like that. I don't want you to choose good just because you want to avoid punishment. I want you to understand that this path is life. This is who you are. This is what's going to get you to who you really want to be. Even if at the beginning, it doesn't always look that way. This is life. This is not. And I think this can explain another point here. Because if we look at the previous parsha, we see and many ask, why do we have so many psukim about the curse and not that many about the blessing? And we've discussed this also in the past. And 
not getting into that. But if we look here, we see the flip side of that. Moshe only uses a few words. Avot tovedun. You'll be lost if you go the wrong path. But most of what he focuses on is choosing the right path. And Moshe Rabbeinu here is saying, yeah, in the last parsha we did speak about, you know, the punishments. We spoke about the blessing. Put that all aside. That shouldn't be what's driving you in life. What should be driving you in life is the understanding that choosing good is choosing life. This should be the focus. Knowing that if you go off, avot tovedun, you'll be lost. To stay focused, to stay who you are and who you want to be, you need to choose life. You need to choose what I'm telling you is life. Ki hu chayecha ve'orech yamecha. Very good. And really the midrash that you brought is a very, very interesting midrash. And it always amazes me to see how much wisdom there are in these simple midrashim that sometimes you read and we don't really understand them. But actually the midrashim have so many deep levels to them. And specifically this midrash over here brings two meshalim, brings two stories to compare this concept of bachat abachayim. What is it about? Like you said, the first mashal is a mashal to someone who has two paths in front of them, two roads they can take. One that starts pretty good and they don't know that at the end it's going to be very rocky, bushy, with full of thorns. And the other one that starts very bad, starts off with thorns and bushes and rocks. And at the end, it's going to be better. And Hashem tells us, don't be frightened. Don't be taken aback by that scary beginning because in the end, it will end up being good. And therefore you should choose life, even though sometimes life looks like rocky in the beginning. You go through many difficult times. You go through downs, but eventually the ups will show up. The ups will come. You will start climbing back up again and the good will start showing. That's what it means to choose life according to the first mashal. Meaning you have a blessing in front of you. You have a curse in front of you. It's up to you how to look at it and to see out of the curse, out of the bad things, to see the good that's going to end up being at the end, to see the good that can come from it in the end. That is what it means to bachat abachem, to choose life. That's one mashal. And looking at the psukim, understanding what the midrash is trying to say over here, re natati hayom. Look with your eyes that what you have in front of you, it's not that you have either good or either bad and you have to choose the good and don't choose the bad. No, no, no. Hashem gives us everything in front of us and life is full of everything and it's up to you to choose to see what you want to see. Do you want to see only the bad? Do you want to see only the kala? Or do you want to see the good? Do you want to see the life that's coming out of it? Even from the bad things that are happening now, later on that might develop, they will develop into good things that will happen and it's up to you to choose life to see how everything will lead up to the good. And that's the first mushal. But interestingly, again, there's a second mushal in the middle, like I was saying, about a king that has a very big meal, a very big dinner, and he invites over many people, out of which one of them he feels very close to, he likes very much. And since that person is not used to having these big meals, doesn't really understand the dishes that are put in front of him, the king has to point out which dishes the person should have, what's good for them, what should they be eating. And the Midrash says, this is what Moshe Rabbeinu is telling us over here. Because again, when you look at life, many times things are happening to us and we can't really understand why they're happening, what's happening, are these good things, many times they seem to be bad things. And you know, living in a modern society when there's so many yetzer horrors around, so many things that are going on in our life, choosing the values of the Torah many times doesn't look like the best dish. It doesn't seem like the prettiest dish out there, especially when yetzer hara kicks in. The yetzer hara knows how to make everything else look a lot nicer and a lot prettier. But the Torah tells us, choose these values because this is the good dish. This is the pretty dish. But that's only the simple level of the Midrash. Again, the Midrash has many, many levels. Maybe a deeper level of the Midrash is again that concept of understanding that life is full of good things and bad things. And many times things that are happening to you feel like bad things and you can't see how these things are good. You can't even see how they're going to end up being good later on. You don't understand how this can turn into the good. However, you have to understand that this dish is good. And I got to who is pointing at it and he's giving it to you because it's good and you should eat it because it's good even though you don't see it right now even though you don't understand it right now and we've discussed this concept in the past because there's a big difference between the two ideas of saying to yourself now it might be bad but later on in the future it might be good to saying to yourself even the bad now is good I should accept it on myself the same way I would accept the good things just like the Gemara says about a person should make a blessing on the bad news just like they make a blessing on the good news because right now even though it's bad you should accept it on yourself as good and again it's a very difficult level very high level to get to in your worshiping of Hashem and Avodat Hashem but again maybe this is the big difference between the two Midrashim one Midrash the first Midrash talks about a situation when the person realizes and recognizes that right now it's bad they understand it's bad and they say to themselves that in the future it will end up being good the second Midrash is a person that just sits there and doesn't know what's good and what's bad because they're fully dependent on Akadosh Baruch and maybe this is why also these took 
Nisim come right after Parashat HaTshuva because the essence, the basis of Parashat HaTshuva is Shavta Ad Hashem Elokecha. You have to return to HaKadosh Baruch Hu. You have to go back to HaKadosh Baruch Hu. This is what this time of the year is about. This is what Erev Rosh Hashanah, Erev Yom Kippur is about. Returning to HaKadosh Baruch Hu, reminding ourselves that we are in this world for a reason, for a reason to fulfill what HaKadosh Baruch Hu expects us to do, to fulfill our job, to fulfill the Torah, to live by the mitzvahs. This is what we are here for. This is the mindset we should have in our lives, in our day-to-day life. This is what it means, ubacharta bachaim, to choose life. You want to choose life. You want to go through life. You better have that mindset. You should have that mindset of understanding v'shavta ad Hashem lokecha, that you shall return to the Kaddish Baruch Hu, that the Kaddish Baruch Hu is there and setting up everything for you in life, setting your path in life, and you just have to walk down it. Sometimes it begins with bad and ends up with good. Sometimes the bad now is actually good. The good looks like bad. You have to trust the Kaddish Baruch Hu in your path. And also going back all the way to the beginning of the parasha, like the Midrash says, this is what Atem Nitzavim Hayom. This is why the parsha begins with Nitzavim, with standing right there. Like you mentioned, after all the Klalot we had last week, Am Yisrael were taken aback. They were a little too frightened from what's going to happen. So the Torah says, no, Atem Nitzavim Hayom. You're standing right here in front of HaKadosh Baruch Hu. You have a presence in this world. You have a job to fulfill in this world, to follow HaKadosh Baruch Hu's path. This is what this parsha is about. This is what Erev Rosh Hashanah is about. Being now on Erev Rosh Hashanah, like many people, people like to do in the beginning of a year, accept upon themselves many things for the new year and accept upon themselves to correct their ways. This is what it's about. It's about reminding ourselves that it's up to us to choose life. Everybody wants to choose good, but it's not really up to us. Things that happen to us, you can't control what's going to happen to you. You can only control how you react to things. And this is what the Torah is teaching us here again. Choose life. See the good as good. And even the bad, choose to see it as a blessing in disguise. This is what means. Yeah, you know, you said about tshuva and the connection between this and tshuva. It's interesting, the word tshuva, as you mentioned, is to return. And it's a famous question, return to what? What if I was always far and distant and now I'm stepping somewhere where I never was? So I'm not returning. I'm improving my ways. I'm doing better things. I'm not returning. Why is tshuva, and this word repeats itself in our parasha over and over, lashuv, return? Why is it considered returning? And maybe that's what Moshe is actually saying saying here. He's explaining to us why tshuva is returning. Because choosing good is not just the right thing to do. It's not just going to give you a blessing and avoid from curse. Choosing to follow Hashem is choosing yourself, is choosing life. This is actually, says Moshe, who you really are inside. That's why when you choose this, you're actually returning home. If you weren't on that path, you weren't only distant from HaKadosh Baruch Hu. You were actually distant from yourself. You were actually distant from your own life and who you could be and should be. When you go back on that path, you're choosing life, you're choosing yourself, you're choosing to return back, not only to HaKadosh Baruch Hu, but back to yourself and to who you are and could be. Wonderful, wonderful. And as this is the last video for this year, we'll take the opportunity to wish everyone a Shana Tova and Ektiva V'Chatima Tova. Thanks for being with us throughout the entire year. In Mitzvah Shem, we will be continuing with these videos and make sure to join next year also. And of course, if you enjoy these videos, please feel free to comment, like the videos and subscribe to the channel if you have haven't yet. Last year, as I mentioned in the beginning, in Parashat Nitzavim, we discussed the concept of tshuva. We'll link that video also at the end of this one. We also discussed Rosh Hashanah last year in a separate video. We'll link that video too. And again, Shkoyach Yitzi. Shkoyach Tuvia, Shabbat Shalom, and Shana Tova. Shabbat Shalom, Shana Tova, Ktiva V'Chatima Tova to you and to all of our Israel.